Now, my name is Christian Berger, and today I want to present our joint work um, Chasing the Speed of Light Low Latency Planetary Scale Adaptive Byzantine Consensus. Before I start, I also want to mention and thank my co authors, Livio, Hans, Ninicius, and Allison, who all put so much effort into this paper. Now, planetary scale BFT consensus becomes increasingly interesting with the adoption of distributed ledger technology. And in the last years, many novel BFT protocols have emerged, and they were often specifically designed for their use in blockchain systems. Examples include Hotstuff, MirBFT, Tendermint, Curry, and many more. These protocols require communication between the replicas to guarantee consistent decisions, and for which they typically employ quorums. Now, in this presentation, I will introduce Flash Consensus, a novel transformation that optimizes the latency of quorum-based BFT consensus protocols to allow for faster transaction ordering in geo-distributed systems. For quorums, it is important to note that the size of a quorum depends on the resilience threshold, T, of a protocol. A Byzantine T dissemination quorum has the fixed size of n plus T plus 1 divided by 2, as you um, can see in the left picture A. However, weighted replication allows to form quorums of variable size, and the concrete size of a quorum here is flexible and can depend and can vary between n minus t and 2t plus 1 replicas, offering also the intersection guarantee of intersecting in more than t Byzantine replicas. This means that weights allow to form proportionally smaller quorms in a system, as you can see here in the picture on the right, where the blue quorm can be smaller than the green one. Now, previous works like Wheat and Aware use weighted replication to assign high voting weight to the faster replicas in a system, thus accelerating consensus decisions. Now, assume that you have a fixed size system and um, you use weighted replication in the system. This would require the existence of some additional spare replicas, so some extra redundancy needs to be provided to the system, and it thus results in a trade-off situation. This is because um, if we need to provide this redundancy, we need to choose if we want to use the redundancy for increasing the performance of the system, or if we want to increase the re resilience of the system by using the redundancy to account for the resilience threshold. I will um, demonstrate this on an example. Now, um, remember that the size of the quorums depends on the resilience threshold. Here in the picture on the right, you can see that small chrome here um, can consist only of seven replicas for a resilience threshold of three. Now, if you want to let the system operate with a resilience threshold of six, then um, the quorum becomes larger and we would have to, it needs to consist of 13 replicas um, yeah, to guarantee the resilience of six. Now, a key observation is that, obviously, if we use proportionally smaller quorums, like the small circle here above, then um, we can let the quorums be formed of replicas that are much closer to each other. And this effect can be used to accelerate the exchange of votes in the system and thus speed up the whole consensus. Now, finally, um, achieving consensus faster can also lead to clients in different regions observing faster transaction latencies. Now, the goal of our paper was to design a BFT protocol for the use in wide area networks that can dynamically adapt its resilience threshold. Moreover, we still wanted to satisfy the standard state mesh repl replication guarantee safety and liveness for the optimal resilience threshold, which is just um, below a third of the system size. Also, it should achieve fast commit latency in the expected common case, which is when there are only a few faults and a stable and correct leader is in place. Now, um, we assume that um, the system consists of n replicas in total, and the number of actual faulty replicas f is less than a third. Further, we um, require partial synchrony that is assumed for liveness only. Our main contributions are the following. First, we explore how to detect malicious behavior 
under an underestimated resilient threshold T fast by auditing the system and repairing the correct replica state after an agreement violation happens. Second, we show that it is possible to preserve the usual SMR guarantees under the larger resilience threshold T, even if the agreement forms are formed using a smaller threshold T fast. And third, we conduct an extensive evaluation based on both real and simulated networks to reason about potential latency gains that clients dispersed all over the globe can achieve when using flash consensus. Fourth, we show that the principles underlying flash consensus are generic enough to be used in other Quorum-based BFT protocols such as hot stuff, leading to even higher latency gains. Now, the basic idea of flash consensus relies in continuous self-optimization at runtime by adapting the resilience threshold and um, changing the weights to enable the immersion of smaller consensus quorum for low latency transaction, exec transaction execution. Um, to achieve this, it aims for combining the best of both worlds since it maintains the maximum resilience of the system for supporting diagnosis and repairs while continuously attempting to run consensus um, in faster by optimizing the system for the expected common case in which there are few or no failures. And this is, idea is realized by using abortable state machines to switch between two modes of execution. Um, one mode uses the lower resilience threshold, TFAST, which is shown here in the left. And then there's also a conservative mode, which can tolerate up to, two, um, up to T failures. Now, this overall design comes with a few challenges. First, we need mechanisms to detect and diagnose the system when there are more than TFAST failures, in which this um, mode would basically break the safety. And second, we need a robust configuration mechanism to safely abort this fast mode and move to con the conservative mode in such situations. Finally, the client replica contract needs to ensure linear stability in our dual fault threshold approach. Now we employ a lightweight forensics procedure, which is inspired by the work BFG protocol forensics. But notably different is that replicas themselves are the ones to supervise and audit the system, not the clients. And the replicas periodically broadcast checkpoint messages, as is, it's done in PPFT, in which they publish the digits of the state and the highest consensus instance I for which a decided request um, affect this checkpoint. Now, if a correct replica, the auditor, detects non-matching checkpoints, it wants the lightweight forensics procedure to identify and obtain a non-reputable proof of culpability for the protocol violators. And in the first step of this procedure, the auditor collects evidence, which are basically decision logs of the other replicas that include signed commit messages since the last stable checkpoints. And now if um, the auditor detects the first divergent decision, basically, by having um, yeah, conflicting signed messages collected, then basically the replicas, there are at least T fast plus one in the intersection of conflicting signed messages, they are the culprits and they are being basically, um, yeah, just they are basically um, proved to be the culprits by this proof of culpability, which is then broadcast in the system. Now, for detecting the faults, it is necessary to periodically check the state of replicas to ensure they are still consistent. And um, if we find a proof of culpability, the system needs to be reconfigured. And this happens by um, first aborting the fast mode, after which the system will then enter a synchronization phase. Second, um, the culprits which are identified by the POC, which is basically proved by um, yeah, conflicting signed messages, they are purged from the system, which will be initiated by the new leader. Third, replicas will perform a rollback to the last stable checkpoint and re-execute a consistent log of decisions that they receive from the new leader. Now, um, 
In typical BFT SMR system, a client only waits for T plus one replies, matching replies to ensure that the replicated system perfectly em emulates a centralized server. Or the squam size can also become M plus T plus one half um, if one wants to avoid running consensus when performing read-only operations. Now, these sizes, they are still valid for flash consensus when it operates in a conservative mode. But when the system is in its fast mode of execution, the possibility of equivocations and divergent decisions requires revisiting the number of matching replies. A client needs to wait to ensure that the request will never be undone. And in case of an equivocation, we can access information from the forensics procedure to let the new leader discard contributions from such malicious replicas. Now, um, with this result, which is um, explained in our paper in more detail, client only need to wait for n minus t fast minus one matching replies, which is however still more than um, clients would wait for in usual BFT SMR system systems. Now um, we implement flash consensus on top of aware, essentially switching between two instances of aware configured for different resilience thresholds. Aware itself is um, built on top of the read and BFT smart framework. The implementation mainly required the integration of BFT protocol forensics, as well as the methods for switching and the reconfiguration of the system. As an additional optimization, we integrated client-side speculation by using correctables, which allow to define incremental consistency guarantees. Here we use four different levels. First is the result of the first response received that um, basically comes without any correctness guarantee. Weak provides sequential consistency, um, provided that there are no more than T fast failures in a the system. Then strong, um, it provides linear stability, the standard guarantee of state machine replication, but only when there are no more than T fast failures in a system. And um, yeah, lastly, final provides vulnerability under the optimal resilience threshold T. Um, we conducted some extensive evaluations for flash consensus using mainly two different setups. The first is our AWS cloud-based network for which we use the real network and also a collapse-based emulation. In this setup, we, um, yeah, we used 21 different geographic regions to place replicas in. We also have a second setup for which we experimented with a larger network of 51 replicas. Um, you can find some results there in the paper. In our first experiment, we evaluated a flash consensus on the AWS net with 21 replicas. And in comparison to BFT Smart, flash consensus can order transactions um, 3.57 times faster. This means that consensus accelerates a lot in the system. And even when waiting for more replies from the system, the observed end-to-end -end latencies, which are displayed in this figure, um, they also improve quite a lot, as you can see. When considering the latency of requests with the final consistency level, we observed a speed up of 1.87 times faster, uh, faster accepted results. And this is indicated by the um, green bars here. And for the speculative levels indicated by yellow, yellow, orange, and red, the speed up even becomes larger, as you can see in the picture. Now with this acceleration, the latency flash consensus achieves approximate or even beat the hypothetical speed of BFT smart in an ideal network in which all links would transmit at two thirds of the speed of light, which is currently accepted as the upper bound for transmitting information over the internet as indicated by the um, gray strokes here in the picture. In the next experiment, we studied the runtime behavior of the system by inducing events like crashing a leader or creating network disturbances, for instance, by making some replicas slower. In the diagram, you can see that initially, the system um, needs some time to optimize itself to reach the fast mode in which it can display significantly faster transaction latencies. After the induced leader failure here, um, the system upwards to the resilient mode, then switches back to the fast mode and re-optimizes itself to achieve, again, fast transaction latencies. In the second event, we slow down the new leader 
which results in a performance penalty here for some time, but eventually the system adopts and um, yeah, re-optimizes itself to choose a faster configuration again. We also want to show that the underlying principles of flash consensus are generic enough to be used with other Chrome-based beef 3 protocols. This is why we incorporated its features into hot stuff, yielding a flash hot stuff variant. Since hot stuff uses more communication steps in its agreement pattern, it is even more sensitive to how fast progress making replicas are connected. In an evaluation within an even larger network, we observed that flash hot stuff could make 4.82 times faster decisions. Further, the average speed up across all client locations for the final level was 2.56 times faster. And for the speculative levels, um, the speed up even um, was higher than that. Um, in most cases, the latency slash hot stuff achieved here also beat the hypothetical speed for hot stuff in an ideal network or even match hot stuff with links transmitting at the speed of light as indicated by the two, two bars here. To conclude, um, flash consensus is a novel transformation for Chrome-based protocol, PFT protocols, which combines weighted replication with a portable SMR and PFT protocol forensics. It can safely underestimate the resilience threshold and thus use faster Chromes to accelerate consensus decisions. Moreover, our evaluations showed that the potential for latency speed up is quite substantial. Also, the use of client-side speculation allows to reduce latency even further by relaxing consistency guarantees. This can be very beneficial for many applications in which some of the operations might not be so security critical. Finally, please um, check out our paper, which we recently published as a preprint on Archive. Um, with this, I thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, then feel free to ask.